In the absence of light, there are no shapes, no values, no colors, and certainly no textures or details. Perhaps something lingers there in the obscure depths, but we can't see it. Without light, we see nothing. But enough of this mystery. Let me turn on some ambient light. Suddenly, the shroud is gone. Even though it may be very dim, this light conveys to us a great deal of information about the scene. No doubt you can make out the general form of the object now, although its surface appears rather flat to us still. Ambient light feels very natural to our eyes. It's the general light that's being scattered and reflected throughout the environment. It's a soft, diffused light, much like what we experience on a cloudy day. Let me switch on a strong, direct light source. That really bumps up the drama and contrast, and we can clearly get a feel for the full volume of the sphere. And maybe just for fun, let me flip on a kick light too. There, the light's conveying a ton of information about the space and object now. As you can see, light is necessary to convey any visual information. Every value, shape, color, and texture is shown to us through light reflecting off objects and entering our eyes. Therefore, in order to properly understand anything that we see and paint, we must first understand light. Throughout this course, I will constantly be referring to the various components of light and shadow. It's perhaps the most critical information to understand as a painter up front, because when we're painting, we're not actually painting objects. We're painting light that is reflecting off of objects. If you're interested, you should definitely study light from a scientific perspective. The physics behind it all is fascinating, and a deeper understanding will lend you a greater confidence and command while painting. However, for now, it's enough to simply focus on the observable features of light that will be present in practically every rendering we create. As I mentioned earlier, the sphere is a wonderful starting point because with it, we can clearly examine the anatomy of light and shadow. So let's use it as a model for the moment. We'll focus on the following essential components that you'll need to become very familiar with. First up is the form shadow. This is the shadowed side of an object. The direct light is blocked from reaching these faces, which are turned away from the light source. All solid objects will cast a shadow. These are projected onto other surfaces and tend to have sharp edges near the base of the object they're cast from. Cast shadows are a lot of fun to work with because they allow you to convey a great deal of information rather easily. Among other things, cast shadows clearly indicate the direction of the light source and help us understand the relative position of objects within a scene. Halftone describes the full range of tonal values observed within the lit region of an object. Depending on the material and local color of the object, halftones can be quite dark in value, but never as dark as regions in shadow. The darker region of a form shadow is known as the core of shadow. I will typically just refer to it as the core shadow. It's darker because these planes are facing away from reflected light that illuminates other regions of the shadow. The brightest region of the half tone where the light source hits the surface most directly can be referred to as the center light. These brightest half tones will appear on planes that face the light source most directly. We must be careful not to confuse this with specular highlights. Specular highlights are the mirror-like reflections of the light source. These reflections will sometimes be much brighter than the halftones of an object, or sometimes barely distinguishable at all. These will tend to appear very sharp on smooth surfaces, but may be much softer on rough surfaces. 
Occlusion shadows, also known as ambient occlusion, appear anywhere light has trouble reaching, such as in tight corners or between crevices where forms come into contact. Of all the features of shadow, these are the most commonly overlooked by artists. While their effects may appear subtle, they go a long way towards making a scene feel more naturally lit. Reflected light provides the illumination that we see within shadows. On the sphere, you can see where the light from the ground plane is bouncing up into the shadows. If there were no reflected light or ambient light, the shadows would be completely dark. It's important that the value of reflected light in your shadows not become as bright as your halftones. This is a common mistake that will break the hierarchy of value in your image and the illusion of light with it. Often it's a good idea to downplay these reflections so that your shadows remain cohesive. The shadow line is technically called the terminator. You will typically see the most pronounced texture along this transition from light to shadow because the raking light makes uneven surfaces stand out dramatically against shadow. Lastly, the softening edge of a cast shadow is known as the penumbra. The further a cast shadow edge is from the base of the object casting it, the softer it will become as light and shadow mix. I know this might appear like a lot to remember, but with practice, I'm sure you'll find it very intuitive. Not all these elements are necessary to create great work because not every image demands to be fully rendered. The way you choose to include or ignore some of these features will largely determine your personal style. However, when you really want to push the illusion of luminosity within your paintings, these are the tools at your disposal. It's a great exercise to practice identifying these features of light and shadow in various environments. While the world is certainly full of complexity that can often make these components more challenging to discern, light, thankfully, is quite predictable. This is great because it means that once we become intimately familiar with the character of light in a wide range of scenarios, we will be able to apply that knowledge to our creative work. If we want to, we'll be able to invent entire scenes from our imagination and illuminate it with convincing light and shadow.